There's one more door that's locked. Here is Gangapurna Lake. I'm gonna be going this way to Talicho and then Throngla Pass is that way. Namaste and good morning. This is our sixth day of hiking as we're just leaving the village of Nawal. Uh, we are at 3,600 meters and Kailani was feeling a little bit of the altitude last night. I fortunately have yet to have any uh, adverse side effects from it, but uh, we are just walking through the town now. I think we were one of the few people that were staying here last night. We've only seen just a few more people and I really loved our night last night, even though uh, it's one of their big festivals going on. It's like a five day festival uh, and people were partying in the streets till like 1 a.m. last night. Just a small group, but they made a lot of noise. And for being such a small town, it was quite loud and boisterous with the sounds of bells from all the yaks. And I think there was something scrambling over our roof all night last night, keeping us kind of awake. But other than that, really an amazing place to spend the night. Wow, I'm already out of breath. But now we're just walking through. Uh, we're supposed to have an easy three and a half hour day to Manang today. So here we are back again in the main part of the town. And yeah, it's supposed to just be a little up and then downhill and flat on the Jeep road. So I'll try to get as many uh, shots of the mountains as I can today and just take you along with us as we as we go on this short day to Manang to enjoy our rest day. You can see how smoky the village is already because everyone is burning this, probably not this juniper, but juniper. So the smell is really nice. Kailani's allergic. So I don't know how much he's enjoying the juniper incense, but I certainly am. <laughs> There's so much stonework being done up here and Kailani just spotted what must be a stone mine. Up there, there's a little path and lots of big slabs of stone that they must be using for their construction for all of these buildings and for restoring the buildings. There also needs to be a, a lot of flat stone for those uh, stone shingles that are on all the roofs. So it's nice to see where they're being made. And these cliffs, you can tell like just how, from how striated they are and the kind of stone that they are, that they're fantastic for cutting out uh, large flakes. So really good for construction. Uh, we're just reaching uh, our first signpost to Manang and we're crossing over a uh, tiny river. Way to Manang, marked with white and red for our main trail. There's a soccer field here. It must be for uh, a youth team and stupas in the distance with these incredible mountains. It must be hard to find a, felt, <laughs> a flat place to uh, to practice football or soccer or anything. So this is the second field we've seen up here in the mountains. Tough start this morning. Really starting to feel the altitude now. Even just this little hill. Whew, making me winded. Having to take little tiny turtle steps. At the top of the hill, got to the stupa, and there are more of these stone carved tablets. But beautiful views of these Annapurna Mountains, and that's where we were staying last night. This is the mountain Gangapurna, and these are, I'm not exactly sure which Annapurnas they are, but I think it's like two, three, and 
four. We've just hit some very steep switchbacks where we're gonna be making our way down. Down, 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 down. Back down to the valley floor, I think. We've come down off of those switchbacks and now we're just crossing this beautiful, small, small river. And this whole time that we've been trekking, we've been passing. Here, I'll walk you up to it. Oh, there's a marsh. Um, these old stone walls and crumbled buildings. And you can see in the ground where the ground is raised up a little bit, but still covered in dirt. And you can just see the, the very, you know, the top portion of that wall sticking out, maybe one or two stones high. But what happens is over time, those walls fall down and they get buried with dirt. So underneath all of these uh, mounds, there are footings for old houses that, you know, are looking just like these houses once looked like. And this is a very common thing in the States, uh, in New Mexico too, like especially like in Chaco Canyon area, which is a, a Native American uh, city, an old, old city that's been restored. But you can see that all over the place and all over the place uh, here as well. So it's amazing how old these villages must be. And, I don't know if these buildings that we're seeing are restored or, or not, but uh, it's something to, to find out. Here's that beautiful mountain stream that we're just crossing. And I think we're going right into uh, one of these little towns, but it looks totally abandoned. So I guess we'll find out. taking a little peanut butter cracker break here in the shade and there's just the most amazing view of where we've been hiking so far I don't know if you can see it maybe I'll post it in another clip but this valley and ridge line right here just continues all the way up and there's a bunch of different peaks this way and we have the Annapurna peaks coming over this way so it's been quite a day of views and walking in the desert. This really is reminiscent of a, uh, a bad land, which is really crazy to see up here because that's something you usually only see really, really in the desert. So yeah, it's amazing. We have like every single climate zone we've seen in the last few days here. Just stop for a quick sea buckthorn juice, which is a local juice grown from berries around here. It's warm and sour, kind of like a pineapple juice almost. Maybe like a pineapple and a papaya. Delicious. We're just walking past Bracca now, which looks like an uh, amazing, impressive town built out of stone right up against the hill. It's right behind me. Let me show you there. It's about 45 minutes from Menang, so I think for tomorrow, during our rest day, we'll go, uh, we'll come back and explore. 
because it looks really, really beautiful and historic. There we go, we have our first glimpse of Manang. Really not a bad walk to get here. It was very uh, kind of slopey, but mostly downhill and mostly flat. So a really nice day of hiking. Uh, and we've passed many, many historic towns. So it's been really nice to just have all day to just take our time and to stop and to, to look at all of these towns. We're just coming in here and there's a long stone wall covered with those stone tablets with the inscriptions on them. And it looks like there's just lots of apple orchards. And we're walking on the main road right now. It actually hasn't actually, it hasn't been too busy. So pretty nice. Just making it up that last hill to Manang. We're here at the map board and I've heard very good things about the Talicho Hotel, including that it has a bakery. So I'm feeling a little peckish since it was just a simple oatmeal this morning. So maybe I'll go indulge today, even though it hasn't been the hardest day of hiking. So welcome to, uh, welcome to Manang. We just made it to our room. We chose the Cho Hotel. It was really close to the front. They have a really amazing common spaces with big fireplaces. And we have a nice big room and it looks very old. It's not like these little plywood places that we've been staying in lately. Oh, and we could push the beds together. Uh, I'll show you uh, the view from the outside and downstairs too. And Definitely something from the bakery. So I was able to pop open the window to our room inside and I can just sit and here's our view that we get from the room. There's a beautiful little cabbage patch right there. And yeah, I couldn't be happier, it's a great room. This is the common space in the Talicho Hotel. Our room is just outside that door. And it's like we're in a proper nice hotel, except this place was only 600 rupees total. So 300 each. I've just gone down downstairs, the Talicho Hotel to their bakery, and I've ordered an apple crumble. <laughs> and it is a proper crumble. Cinnamon, crumble, sugar. Mm. And he heated it up in a microwave. It's decadent. <clears throat> I just got a couple of boiled eggs to wash down my apple pie. But I'm really jealous because Kailani got this wild mushroom and garlic soup. with dinner tonight, pasta with yak cheese, and mushroom garlic yeah. pizza. So, extravagance. Good morning, namaste. This is our rest day. Finally, we are in Manang. I'm here in our room. I have showered, I have shaved with cold water and no shaving cream, by the way, very painful. Um, so we are just going to be doing some day hikes today. We are going to go to the town of Braca to go to the monastery. We're going to go to Gangapurna Lake, 
and we're just gonna do some walking around. Maybe we'll even go see a movie. So, <laughs> lots of things I didn't expect that we would be doing today. We are headed out of Manang, back down the same road we came, and we are going to Braca. So, it's gonna be a similar journey over there, maybe 45 minutes, and uh, we're gonna go explore the old town and the monastery. So, see you over there. We made it back to the beginning of Braca, and it is just Yak City this morning. We've seen probably a hundred yaks today. Maybe they're coming down to lower elevations because it's getting cold. It definitely froze last night. There was lots of frost and ice everywhere, but let me tell you, it feels good to be hiking, not wearing a backpack. So, almost there to Braca, and it's just baked right into these cliffs that you can see here. So, it's almost like a, like a fortress, but almost there. We just got midway up the stairs and uh, it was a 100 rupee uh, donation to go inside and that's about, it's l less than a dollar right now. Um, we're gonna go up and look at the first monastery up here, this guy, and then we're gonna come down and then man is gonna let us into this other secondary monastery. And he said that this whole place is around 700 years old. Uh, I'm gonna do some more research about it here because it's gorgeous and really beautiful and fascinating. And I bet it has a really interesting story. So I will do some more research and I will let you guys know later. We can only go into the first part of this monastery, but there are these two statues of warrior demons and other murals painted. And it's just all so gorgeous. They're using these deep reds and greens. And then there's one more door that's locked, but I think there's a big shrine inside from what I could barely peek into. So that's what it's like here at the top of the Brecca Monastery. This whole compound is also made Pueblo style. So the roof of your house is the terrace to your neighbors. So when we're looking up here, I'm on the roof of one building and it's the terrace to this building and so on and so forth. It goes down and down and down. So it utilizes these rooftops um, for usable space. You can grow things on them, you can hang out on them, and uh, it's defensible. So. Okay, 
this is the very top of the Braca Monastery. Going inside through these very small doorways. I have to crouch down almost double. And in here, there's many of these locked doors. But it's a very, very small roof. So I wonder what this room was used for. But you can see how it's braced here with stone. It's tying into this beautiful wooden uh, ceiling. So very interesting room. Very, very short. I'm very short. <laughs> All right, now back outside. And these guys are hard at work. We've just left the uh, temple at Braga and you make sure when you're there, when we were there, the, the main monastery was locked tight, um, but there was a man there who let us go inside. He unlocked the door for us. So I think maybe they just keep it locked at, during certain hours, or maybe if there's just nobody around and then they'll come unlock it for you if you ask. So it definitely made the experience a lot uh, better. And it was really amazing to see the inside of that chamber where there were hundreds and hundreds of carved wooden Buddhas and um, different monks, different carvings of different monks. So definitely, definitely ask someone if they can let you in, whether that be down here in the town or if, if you can't find someone up there, uh, if you can find someone up there to let you in, definitely uh, do it. We just got back from Raqqa and now we are going to Gungapurna Lake. That is Gungapurna and the lake is just up this ridge. There is Manang here. So not so far away, maybe 15, 20 minutes hiking to the lake. And I can already tell from here, I don't think you can see it, but there's a huge glacier here. So that must uh, be what's feeding the lake. So uh, just another nice little day hike. Good to gain some elevation and come down, I guess as many times as you can. I know that there's better acclimatization hikes you can do here on your rest day, but uh, I think we're just gonna take it easy. So we actually decided to go up a little bit further to the Chunkor viewpoint, and uh, here we are, right at the top. Good acclimatization, it was quite far. I think it took us maybe an hour and a half to get up. There's, there's Manang. Here's the valley that we came through to get here. And for tomorrow, I'm gonna be going this way to Tilicho and then Throng La Pass is that way. So a really nice place to come and get your bearings, see where you've gone and to see where you're coming to, not to mention the views are absolutely spectacular, especially of Gangapurna, which is just right here. And you can really see the whole glacier. The lake is just a dried up uh, bed right now. But I'm sure in the uh, wetter seasons, it, uh, it fills up. So definitely an easy way to get some acclimatization done. It didn't feel too hard. And uh, yeah, we had 85 rupee milk tea here, which is very cheap, maybe 50 cents. So now we begin the journey down. And I think maybe this is gonna be our last physical exercise <laughs> that we do on our rest day. Here is Gangapurna Lake, <laughs> right there. And you can see it's just totally dried up, but there's still a little bit of it running out and down and feeding into the river down there. So it's not completely dried up, but it is getting cold and I guess it hasn't been raining or snowing. So 
uh, not a lot for that glacier to be doing. So really nice hike, but uh, yeah, empty lake in October. Another circuit on the Dahlbach tour. We've got our dal, rice, veggies, potatoes, and a spicy kimchi pickle. This is Kailani's food, so I'm not gonna be eating it. I'm going with the two boiled eggs. But uh, yeah, really beautiful Dahlbach here at the Talicha Hotel. And I think it's made especially nice by this beautiful bowl. <laughs> Makes a big difference. <laughs> It's our last dinner here at the Talicho Hotel, and I thought I could go wrong with a veggie burger. Look at the size of this bun. It is a delicious bun, um, and the, the burger is potatoes and mushrooms. It came with these chunky fries. We also got some potato cheese balls, and Kailani got a French onion soup. Right in the middle of our chess game. But uh, yeah, this is our last meal here. We thought we'd kind of splurge a little bit because it's gonna be back to Talbot uh, pretty soon here, so. Mm, definitely come stay here. I forgot to mention the prices. The burger is 750 rupees. Uh, the cheese balls were 500. The French onion soup was 550, I think, so. Pretty good prices. It's like cheaper than what we've been paying just for Momo's up here. So the prices are back down and we thought we would get a while the getting's good. Yeah.